Hi, I'm Jonathan with Starfire Direct, and today I want to show you how to install a Real Fire G45 burner system with APK 17 series remote control. Let's turn your fireplace into this. Although our installation videos are intended to help our customers, it's always recommended that you hire a professional. These are gas appliances and must only be installed by professionals with fireplace specific knowledge and experience. Start off by opening your chimney flue and attaching the included damper clamp. Tighten the bolt with a wrench. The damper clamp ensures there is always ventilation for the gas log set. If your gas line has a cap on it, remove it and add a gas approved pipe joint compound to the threads. Although it's not necessary, I like to install an elbow fitting and point the elbow towards the back of the fireplace for a tighter, cleaner installation. This elbow isn't included with the log set, but can be purchased at your local hardware store if you choose to add one. Add more pipe joint compound to the male threads and add the adapter fitting to the elbow and the other adapter fitting to the back of the pilot assembly gas inlet. Make sure all fittings are super tight. Safety pilots and remote systems are installed on the right side of the burner and cannot be reversed. If your gas line is on the right side of your fireplace, you should be okay with the included flex connector. But if your gas line is on the left side, like what's shown here, you'll want to purchase a longer half-inch flex line to feed behind the burner and connect it to the gas source. Tighten the flex connector on the burner first, position the burner, then feed the flex connector over to the gas inlet and connect it. This ensures the flex line doesn't get kinked or twisted. It's important to remember to never use pipe joint compound or thread sealer on flared compression fittings. Center the burner in the fireplace. Some kits include stabilizer clips that clamp around the grate and slide in over the burner to help secure it in place. Recenter the grate and burner. Next, install the small battery in the remote control and then the four AA batteries in the receiver. Make sure these are installed in the right direction. Clip the receiver cable into the back of the valve system until it clicks into place. Position the cable off to the side. Remember, this can melt if it's too close to the fire. Install the heat shrouds over the valve and regulator. The manufacturer recommends that the receiver stays outside of the fireplace, but for this video, we're showing it inside next to the valve. Make sure it's set to the remote setting. Now that everything is hooked up properly, it's time to test the burner system. Turn the knob on the pilot system to the pilot position and push in. This will allow a little bit of gas to come out of the pilot. Continue holding in the pilot knob and using a long stick lighter in your other hand, try lighting the pilot. It's important to remember that there is air in the gas line since this is a fresh installation. It can take up to a few minutes for all of that air to purge out of the pilot. Be patient with this step. Once your pilot lights and the thermocouple has heated up for about 10 to 15 seconds, you should be able to release the pilot knob and the pilot should stay lit. Once your pilot is lit, you should be able to turn on the burner system using your remote control. Press and hold the on button until the burner lights. This is the perfect time to test the flame height settings and turn it off and on a few times. Once you know your burner system is working great, it's time to add the silica sand for natural gas or vermiculite for propane gas. This installation is natural gas, so we're using silica sand. Pour the sand onto the burner and cover the entire tray. You'll notice I turned off the pilot to complete the installation, and I'll just relight it after I'm finished. Make sure the silica sand is just on the burner area. You may have some left over. Next comes the glowing embers. I like to quickly dump the bag on top of the sand, break them up, and spread them over the burner. The better you break them up, the better they glow. A must-have accessory we always recommend is LF10 Lava Rock. This helps trim out the log set and hide the ugly connections. Much like a picture frame enhances a beautiful picture. You'll want to mound some on the sides, just a little bit in the front, and whatever is left over can simply go in the back. Take care not to bury the valve since this will need to be accessed sometime in the future. Some sets include an ember riser that can be added to the back of the burner. This simply slides on the burner and you can add extra embers on top of it. Time to put all the tools away, clean up all the excess debris, and get ready to set your logs. To set your logs, follow the instructions provided. Typically, you have a narrow, tall log in the back, 
the main decorative log in the front, and a few stack logs on top. Make sure these top logs are steady so they don't roll out on accident when hot. It's time to relight your pilot and get ready to set the mood with your new Real Fire log set right from the comfort of your couch. Just point, click, and relax. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or call our sales team and we'll be happy to guide you in the right direction. If this video was helpful, make sure to fire up the like button and subscribe to get updates on all new videos.